Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my account showcase for Season 8 of RTA, the Conquest season. Uh, ended up in uh, Emperor. Uh, I don't know, I, I allowed it to uh, kind of decay in the last 3 hours, so roughly around like rank 200 I believe. Anyways, you see the uh, stats there on the on the screen. Uh, so here are my builds. Uh, this is the season with the A. Robbie skin for context. Um, but I, I I need to make this video, otherwise uh, I'll never really get to it because it's already been like a couple days since the uh, season just ended. Anyways, I'm gonna go through this blast through this quick because I have around like 76 heroes or something like this built. Um, so let's just go through it. I'll actually open up only the the gear when it's like something to talk about. Uh, otherwise, uh, like my past videos, I'm not gonna like blast through all the stats. Just see the total stats on the left side there. So my uh, Ed, Sigurd Scythe, Speed Set, didn't max his S2, but I did like him enough that I double S'd him. I went pretty ham on his banner. Um, I like his speed, I like his damage. I think the bulk I would have wished to have a bit more, but he's like a 4... 435 gear score hero, so I'm already pushing too much. Maybe in the crit damage I should lower that for more bulk when I get the gear. Hoa unfortunately is going to get nerfed soon. So this is gonna be the last time we get to see her in this in the in this prime. Um, this helmet actually is insanely good. I just could not roll the crit damage out. It's a insanely high gear score. Gear, well, not insanely. That's like 75, 76 gear score or something. Um, so it's really not worth rolling that crit damage out. And in a way, it's good that I never made that decision. That that would be a rash decision for one. But because she's getting nerfed, this helmet might not be applied applied to her. Um, I really chased the attack on this because I think her uh, output damage had to be really good. The speed is slightly on the lower side for Hua Young's around this caliber. Um, I would have liked to see 15,000 HP, but a lot of my stats were actually rolled into the flat attack as you can see there, which is not really optimal. So the most optimal Hua Young would on honestly be like high attack roll on these two pieces and then you have a bit of flat attack, but mainly you want like percent rolls in her full overall build. Uh, Fire Ravi got to use her after her buff, maybe once or twice, not super crazy, I didn't like spam her, but in the right fight she does well, I think that's an okay build. Uh, do have some imprint, I mean if I can get a triple S, uh, that bulk combo would be perfect for me in my opinion. But uh, I do have some ER, I think it's in the, yeah I think it's in this here. Um, could roll that into something else, but because I never spammed her so much, I didn't think it was that worth it. Anyways, so... It's on my secret scythe. And then uh, Aeros, uh, obviously used um, most most of the time using the release imprint, but the self imprint for mainly like tanking Hua Yong if they don't have attack buff or something like that could could be in handy, could come in handy and then, uh, you know, put him in the back line, he can self barrier. Uh, the I like the speed, I like the, the HP, defense on the lower side, effect resist I got where I wanted it. Uh, this is mainly the thing pulling down the entire build I believe. This would be uh, a pretty fast ring, but it is an 80 gears, uh, 80 tier gear. So I'm missing 5% HP there and of course the higher potential rolls in terms of the substats outside of the 19 speed which is really nice obviously. Um, so that's that. Fire Charlotte. Didn't use a lot, but I mean, when I needed to, it was like, it was fine. Um, I have Symbol of Unity not used on anyone at the moment, so... Um, but I'm just like kind of like looking for the right hero. Like, it could technically still work for her, but I just don't use her a lot. Um, you may have saw this build last season. Uh, uh, last season's showcase, this is exactly the same build. Minus it's not on Symbol of Unity, so the attack is lower. Um, the HP is higher, the symbol of unity would be like something like this, right, 273 attack. Um, so it would be a higher, higher attack, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think she's okay, usable. Uh, this season, I I opted to cleave a lot more, cleave, aggressive play, and also if you're watching my arena videos right now, I'm pushing in the triumph season for uh, ideally ending top 30 uh, for arena. Uh, I am cleaving a lot and uh, this fire shiri at this kind of speed, the damage is just a bonus. It's not, you know, I, I ideally I could have him higher damage, but realistically it's the speed. I want him to use as a bridge, as a speed imprint, as a Sasha Thanes holder. Um, so it is what it is. It's not on the best gear, but uh, it's usable. Um, just a bridge uh, for some, some cleave, cleave comps. 
Uh, Fire Hand guy, uh, very high value hero. Uh, he keeps going in and out of seasons, but I think he always has some good versatility. He's good into like Alencia, good into Hand guy, um, depending on the draft. Uh, so I just have him. This is recommended by uh, you know players like Winter Wish, Legend players, um, saying just have him faster than Hand guy and just having him higher damage. Not perfect crit rate, but it is what it is in terms of my gear. It's, it's like spread r like really thin right now. Fire Mercedes uh, is used everywhere in terms of uh, guild with defense, arena defense. Um, I've never really used her as a anti cleave deterrent in in world arena. I opted to use different methods. I don't technically like relying on RNG, uh, but because of her magic for friends proc uh, negating any non counterable attacks. It's its own separate mechanic. Uh, she's used everywhere. So this is my stat line for it. I'm, I'm satisfied with it. It's on a speed boot. I'm satisfied with it. Like it has decent bulk. It has good damage. The speed is on the low side, but it's really just for like RNG Fiesta. So counter and magic for friends. Um, Milum, this was shown last season as well. Never touched her, never used her again. Um, used her to uh, fight in one of the content creator tournaments uh, last season. Uh, last season World Arena and it hasn't changed um, so I won't be talking about that too much Politis because of cleave um, on book and some damage it is at 97 crit rate and it has screwed me over unfortunately it's just honestly it takes a couple max roll gems which is uh, I think right here yeah so like what one right there one right there I believe and that it would be at 99 crit rate but 97 has failed me <laughs> <laughs> As like a C Pavel initiator, I've actually missed the crit sometimes, it's actually annoying. Um, built another Politis. Um, I, I forgot what Mystic Banner rotation it was. There was a Politis combined and I just could not get the ML5. Or was it ML4? Was it Bunny Dom? I think it might be Bunny Dom. But anyways, I pulled like a ton of Politis. Like I still have two in my storage right now. Um, and I'm going to save it just in case there's a quote unquote ML Politis. I'm just gonna save those for that, but I built one not even level 10 friendship and not molded. It was in response to DJB being so cancerous in the end of the season uh, for Conquest and he's still really good right now. I don't know if he will be as crazy if Smilegate decides the next RTA season they're gonna remove the Soul Weaver frenzy. I think most top players are thinking, hey, you know what, just remove it. Um, but uh, we'll see what Smilegate does, and maybe he doesn't become as prominent anymore, I don't know. But either way, she was built for this reason, specifically. Um, I kind of like the speed, the 200 there is pretty decent, the bulk is okay, it has effectiveness and effect resist. And as you see, I went ham on that, um, on the imprint there, because again, I pulled like 6 Politis on that at Mystic Banner. Uh, Carrot... I don't use her a lot, and that's why she doesn't have a max book. Ideally, I have enough toggle holes. Uh, you will see throughout my my roster here, ton of toggles already used, maxed, and uh, she's not a high pick hero for me. So uh, I fluctuated with her build throughout the entire season, like more 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 bulk, less attack, more speed, more bulk, and all that stuff. And I just ended up doing this because it was the gear that was left over. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, it's not even really optimized. Like ideally in this meta, you want effectiveness in her as well. Uh, but that's that. Uh, Shu, I hate her in terms of like, I hate when I have to use her because she doesn't pop off. And then I hate facing her because she always pops off. Um, it's one of the most cancerous units in this game right now. Um, she can still kill green, kind of like how Hua Yang currently can kill blue. <laughs> um, mine is on HP set because one day I was uh, trying to get an A Ross ring as you saw it was that uh, uh, 80 tier HP ring and I got this instead and I'm like okay maybe this is usable on a uh, HP scaling bruiser ideally I want Shu still on immunity um, but the HP set that I had with this ring and this it was kind of like okay you know what let's just put it on her let's make it usable um, so she ends up being like pretty good bulk. Um, she is at an S imprint as you can see. Damage is great, I think. Um, speed is on the slower side. I don't have a max snow crystal. Ideally, that would be uh, very optimal. But uh, you know, when I get it, I'll get it. Um, obviously, everything else is min max in terms of the EE. 
um, because she is still effective. Rem, I have nerfed her a lot. Like I said with the Fire Mercedes commentary is that I don't like relying on RNG heroes as anti-cleave. So I don't really use Green Armin either. I think she's in this showcase. Um, I don't use Green Armin either really, but uh, I'll show you the build if we get to it. So her Sigurd Scythe has been greatly reduced. As you saw, I had a plus 30 on Edward. I had a plus 30 on Fire Ravi. So you can see how I take priorities over those heroes over Rem. Um, but regardless, I, I think her bulk is pretty good. The damage is all right. Uh, and she is triple S from a long time ago. Krau, uh, definitely usable still. I wish I had more premium gear for him. I'm just spread too thin. I completed an HP set and this is a 75. Now 75 is not even that bad if it rolled high. This one relatively rolled low. But because if you complete the HP set, it is very high value on a Krau. And as you can see, it's very not optimal, right? The stats here. 26 wasted stats into effectiveness. But I still managed to get like a decent chunk of HP. The speed is okay. Effect resistance works out. The defense is on the lower side. It's really being carried by like some, you know, quote unquote, unoptimal gear, but still kind of works out for him. Um, I actually used him this way in the last couple hours uh, of my... Oh, I wanted to go for Legend, but I couldn't. My Emperor climb for the end of the season. So he he still works um, and he's still good into Guild War and all that stuff. So I didn't really mind him on this kind of gear. But eventually, if I get better, I will upgrade him. I think he's still one of the uh, still really good knight. Like you, you definitely don't want him not built if you have him. Uh, Ice Kisei definitely. I use her a lot less than Fire Hand Guy. Um, but even that being said, Fire Hand Guy I hardly use. But really, it's the same kind of mechanic thing where, like, if they if they opt for too much single target and even a spec tenny, those two heroes can you know reset, they can stealth, and then they can swing back into AOE on the second turn. So I think you know having her built was good. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not the best. I have a Wind Rider right now, and Wind Rider is currently in the powder shop, and everybody's buying it. Um, and now, okay, so now here is featuring some of my 300 speed heroes. Now we're gonna get to the, I think what most people are looking at the count showcases for really is like, how much speed gear does this guy have? Um, it, at least that's for me. If I'm watching another account showcase, it's like, how much speed gear does this person have? <laughs> Smogate has really, really messed up the, uh, uh, people's expectations on gear now because of, the, yeah, whatever. Anyways, uh, 300 speed Para, not fast at all. Um, I, I actually think that she's... She is very good. She's no, not, not really a first pick hero anymore as much. Um, but uh, she definitely seals the deal if your opponents drop too slow and do rely on either CR pushing or buffs. So I think her play will always remain in the meta. I think uh, first pick a Sea Lilius, first pick Ran is still a much stronger play, um, especially if you're cleaving or you're playing very aggressive. But uh, that's my thoughts on it. But three, three oh one is very slow. It's just her high base speed really makes up for it. Here's my ran. So my ran, I've been ran running a lot. Uh, last season, I could not cleave at all. But then during that transition, after the content creator tournament, till the preseason or the E7WC mode was added into the uh, into the game, I got like you know two or three 20 plus speed gear, and then that kind of like opened up the options um, for for those who. Uh, know my transition point in terms of like you have the understanding of like oh you know what how significant one speedy piece of gear is it opens up like an entire roster so this season i was able to cleave not the fastest cleaver for sure um but i am able to cleave at a decently comfortable level at least my speed gear is pretty spread so you're, you're gonna see that of course um the para here's the ran so the ran is not super impressive right it's not the fastest it doesn't have the most damage but you know what rnl is amazing <laughs> If you defense break S3 and if you get the attack buff, defense break S3 and then S1 to something, something dies. And and so the RNL on Ran is, is always really good. Um, ideally, I do have a couple slower pieces here. This is my fastest ring. I don't have a faster attack ring. And and like to, you know, it's not it's not like complete crit set. It's on a crit rate neck. It's not the fastest. I, I Ideally, I can get something that has 20 speed, 20 speed here. And I'll be satisfied. I'll say that for now. I'll be satisfied. But I know I won't be. Uh, Lua. Lua shouldn't really be part of the showcase. Although I did use her when she was available. Like not globally banned. For those three days. Somewhere around there. 
I had her at 304 speed and I had to nerf my DN, which you'll see the DN in a couple couple heroes down. But uh, I, I now put her to 299 speed um, and made my DN faster because she was banned. So this is kind of like a snapshot of what I used till the end of the season, all right? So now from this point going forward, after this video recording, things can look different, but at least you kind of have a, a gauge of where I am at right now. Um, I did actually go back and pull a Lua for the 9% effectiveness. That first imprint is always super high value. Um, so now it's at 150, 156 effect, just in case I can't get a soul burn, I still like, you know, the chances being on my side. Uh, SSB on injury, uh, that has always been my concept for SSB, I always like it. Um, she's not so meta anymore, but when I need her, the injury does come in handy. Um, if you guys saw, again, the content creator tournament that was uh, held a couple months back, uh, around last season World Arena, uh, I used her to win like two of my games, like game winning games, right? So um, I, I believe in the injury SSP. This has actually been upgraded since last season. Um, so if you remember my stat line from last season, this is a better version of it. Um, much better in terms of like, I got like 10 more gear score out of it. This is my Aria, uh, never changed since... Actually, when did she come out? Did she come out this season? I, gu I guess she came out last season actually. Yeah, she came out last season before Alencia was buffed. Um, Alencia's prominence uh, shows to be very difficult for her to be super meta, but I think if you pick Arya in a late pick, she's always very strong. So this is my stat lines. I wish for more health, and I would even lower the defense a bit, but I this is the what I have in terms of gear. Um, I, I like this fairy tale ar artifact uh, because it also plays well into K-Ron, so in terms of like K-Ron on a defensive team, I can play Arya and like, you know, as long as she does the counter or something, it can actually strip him, even if it misses, right? So that's the benefit of that. Uh, and then uh, uh, Eda or Ida, uh, I don't use a ton, but I did upgrade her since last season, give her a bit more damage. The attack is on the lower side, but the speed is good for my tuning, uh, so that's my Ida or Eda. Uh, F10E just built just in case I need her um, 270 and 152 effect it uh, it is a double S uh, I'm very lucky getting 10e's in general so my F10E was pretty much imprinted by fire 10e and then my S10E triple S because of fire 10e as well so my account is blessed there uh, DN uh, near the end she was definitely less prominent compared to someone like DJB which is more flexible in both ends um, I, I did like DN so much that I bought her skin, which I usually don't, but 294 speed, the effect resistance is very suffering here. Um, I will talk about this piece of gear, I do flex on stream sometimes. This is, I think, almost 80 gear score. It's really, really good. This, this is my fastest speed piece, in terms of my account is capped at top end speed. Alright, and I don't have anything at 23, which is really unfortunate. I just have a ton of 22s and 21s, which is good, because like I could spread it around, but it's just not, not nothing's gonna be like super, super, super fast. Um, but this was awesome because this this sword rolled a uh, five speed on it and then ended up being a quad roll, uh, which is great. Um, it's just uh, unfortunately on an offset, but you know what, usable. And this season I feel like everybody's chasing so much speed that they don't care necessarily about completing the sets as much, especially for 300 speed openers um, that have that kind of function, a push function. Um, so like Bunny Dom, DJB, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's my DN. And then uh, Elena, I do use. Counter pick is pretty good. Uh, I can do Rand, Closer, Charles type of deals. She's often the force ban. Um, so I can deal with one or the other, either the Rand or the Charles with my double counter pick. Um, the, the stats are okay. She doesn't have like the premium gear, but uh, it's usable because I also have uh, immunity so that like someone like Athletica can't reset her um, in terms of... Like, she'll cut Ethelitica before Ethelitica can actually do the S2 on her. Um, so, so generally speaking, like, she's kind of covered on all, all grounds in terms of an AoE kind of opener. Uh, Amelia had to suffer a lot for the sake of me chasing speed on other heroes. I think her spot is still very good in the meta. She brings good tempo while being a good cleanser. If I have a triple S, I did triple S her on her return. Um, this is also the reason why she's on a lower Guardian Ice Crystals, just because against the, her prominence for my playstyle just wasn't as good, but she's still very, very solid cleanser. If I need to double up on a cleanser um, in case they choose too much Senya or Archdemon Shadow or something like that, Amelia is a really, really strong 
a cleanser in those scenarios, um, especially the way I have her built. So I'm satisfied with her. I mean, I get the ER if I need it. I can still use her at that kind of speed, and the bulk is okay. She'll survive. So that's good. And then uh, Alencia on injury set, I believe is best in slot, especially this season. We don't know about the future seasons, but I do believe it is best in slot. The HP is slightly on the lower side. Ideally, I wish I could get 25,000. Uh, the defense, I wish I could get higher. There is this ring, I will say right now, is the stupidest ring ever. But I think immunity is coming back. So while I'm making this recording, um, I have been starting my Azimanic 13 farming again. Um, now with Epic Crafts in the mix. Um, and when I stopped farming A13, Epic Crafts were not in the mix. So now it's going to be much higher value because now I can just throttle the Epic Crafts on the right side gear and make it immunity, which is great because it's a neutral set. It's the perfect set to Epic Craft on the right side gear, so rings and necklace alike. I do believe that uh, after a couple of months of farming A13 with crafting the right side gear with Epic Crafts, I will get something better, but it's really this Alencia actually has decent gear score except this ring. This really pulls it down. Um, once I get that fixed, I think that's pretty good. The speed I like, the you know the damage I like, um, it is triple S from a long time ago. Alensa Noxian Rax is not maxed, so you almost have a, I think it's a 988 flat HP. You get a bit more HP out of it if I can ever max this artifact. I'm not on the Edward artifact, but for my own reasons. Uh, Rimuru is on... I You know what? I don't want Merciless Glutton on him. I'm going to change this right now. I have a Draco plate that was on him before. This This should be what I want on him for this build. Um, but kind of bulky and basically just to use the the destruction set to be honest um, I, I had him run into a commander Pavel on the last day of the RTA climb and like he doesn't die and this is why I also switched back to Rico play he doesn't die to the the, the cavil s2 um, and uh, uh, even with the previous damage to trigger uh, Commander Pavel's S2. He didn't die, I had an Ori's Holder, and uh, and he one-shot the Commander Pavel. So I kind of like this build. Um, no no longer on pen set, but I don't use Rimuru a lot anymore. Last pick, counter pick kind of deal. Uh, Zahawk kind of built him. Now, while I'm making this recording, he's getting buffed, and his buff, in my opinion, is going to change the way he's built, at least from my current build. Um, so I'm gonna aim for a faster Zahawk next season. I think this is okay. Uh, this is mainly used in Guild War and Arena right now uh, into Shoes and to Senyas. So with Hellcutter and some damage. Green Norman, like I said, I don't use like to use counter heroes as a cleave deterrent. I suppose in the right scenario, I could pick her up here. She's not on immunity, ideally on immunity, so you can resist flans and stuff like that. Um, but uh, that, those are the stat lines there. Maybe I should put this on because HP imprint is really good. Um, but you lose quite a bit of defense, and if you do that, you get a bit more defense, so a bit more damage. Uh, Cleary, I I kept built. Don't think I used her this season, but on Aureus and not even a max, <laughs> so you can tell I really don't. Uh, and then uh, Mort, uh, actually used him in a couple fights, actually three or four very notable fights for me. Uh, they had a Ravi, but they like middle picked Laika, and he doesn't sleep. So it was very, very good um, to have him built. Um, he's on Holy Sack for defensive purposes, but if I was going to really use him in a lot of arena uh, uh, RTA fights, I put him on a different artifact. But he's a pocket pick for me, and he, he just works. I had molded him for the content creator tournament last season. Oh, uh, and, <laughs> and so so that's why I had kept him built, because he's already molded invested, so we may as well. Senya, this season's super, super cancer. Uh, I opted for the immunity effectiveness build, so almost 100 effectiveness. This has 17 effect resistance. I just didn't feel that it was worth taking out in case this piece could be used for someone that benefited from both effectiveness and effect resist in the future. Heck, maybe even herself, depending on how, how crazy builds become in the future, but... Um, this is what she looks like right now. Spear, uh, Spear of a New Dawn is not maxed, but it is what I have. Green Selene uh, on a lower Secret Arts uh, Storm Sword because it's on my ML Selene, which we'll look at later. I like the bulk, the damage is fine. She does what she needs to do, no more commentary on that. Uh, here's another close to 300 speed hero. This is my Green Sid, not on pen set. I don't have the gear to make him fast down on pen set. I think the fastest pen set I can give him will 
put him at a 296 speed with pen and I think the crit rate suffers a bit um, I, I would need like a better boot uh, in order to make that work but um, it, he does do what I need him to do and uh, you know what I, I, I don't think anyone can really use his gear so like for example this like this is 19 speed is crit set but it's flat attack so like a lot of heroes won't benefit from this and he is kind of like the middle ground where he can just benefit from it so uh, I don't think this gear that he has on right now will go to anyone else in the future. Oh, at least not right now. Green Violet, just built to be ice. If they dip in too much ice, you just pick them. Um, really, there's not much to see here. Uh, I think the bulk is a bit too low, uh, or the speed. It's one of those two is too low. The other stuff is okay, I think. Bloodstone Counter Landy is a necessary thing for this season, just because Guiding Light was needed for almost every single Ranger. So I had no choice but to build her as counter, and I know that a lot of players did that as well. Um, Landy on Guiding Light is like absolutely disgusting near end pick, and it is the way to go. If I had another Guiding Light, I would definitely do it, but it is what it is. I actually didn't pick her too much either because in all the fights where I had to pick Landy, it was because she could have had access to Guiding Light, and since I'm not on Guiding Light, it ended up just not being used, so it's kind of unfortunate. Here's my Green Pavel, uh, you'll see him used again if you're watching my arena videos uh, currently uh, on YouTube. He will be used, and this is his stat line right now. I am waiting for Astromancer Elena's uh, second week rotation because the, the Misha artifact is in rotation as long with, with Fire Lytica, um, which I kind of want to triple S F Lytica. So I'm, I'm going to go for that combo right now. I have not pulled for Astro, Astromancer Elena at, the, at this moment. Um, but it's my Pavel there, it is at S imprint, I did this before C Pavel was released um, because I was using him so much. And you know what, he's still decent pocket pick, especially at that speed. Uh, the Destina uh, style this season, um, and, and I know it does depend on what kind of playstyle you go for, but I pre-ban uh, people like Angel of Light Angelica. So I, I run her on lower ER, it's actually in fact really really low. Um, I guess if I needed to force higher ER on the first turn, I could do that, but her her release imprint is actually very high value for the teams that she usually tries to carry. Um, so I went for the higher speed, higher bulk variant of Destina this season, and higher level of Guardian Ice Crystals, just because I use her more than I did Amelia. Rowana, don't need really talk about, she's just built so, you know, to counter those <coughs> non-stop counter or AoE or whatever, blah blah blah. See, Lily is 298 speed. She was running a 302 the entire season, but Lua's entrance into the game forced me to have to spread my speed gear out too much, so she definitely started dipping a bit. Um, this is not maxed, obviously, uh, but I uh, get about 100, 100 e uh, effectiveness on turn 1 there, so it's okay. <clears throat> Um, I'm not a big C Lilius user in terms of I never know how to, like if I first pick her, I never know how to finish my comp with her. Um, so I, I, I just, yeah, she's just built, but uh, not really used. Lionheart Sermia, a very fun one. Near the end of the season, I actually swapped her to a HP boot. I actually converted the boot in order to get this build on Durando so she pushes. Um, and it's like the regular stuff. So this is the right side uh, with the speed boot is what she looked like last season. Um, and in this season, I wanted to try it with the higher HP. It felt much more usable for me. It felt much more usable for me. Like the usual, like kind of, like pickups that people use to try to kill her off in one shot, like a Rimru or something. It just doesn't really work when she has like almost another 3,000 more HP. Um, and then the Durandal as the push. And this HP boot actually just ended up being cool because it had a bit of effect resist, so with the effect resistance buff, I get about 95, so that's, uh, it's nice to have. I'm gonna keep her that way until I find that she's too slow or something, but in the comps that I play her in, it is that the opponents are really settling down with like a Valencia, but maybe C. Lily's first pick, but they're not trying to speed up and ag aggress you. That's where I kind of pick her. Um, and then LQC, uh, the crit rate is super low, self uh, critique there crit rate is super low i actually f i would fail to actually crit darks if not enough hellcutter stack but it is what the gear allows for me to do and i am just i don't use her enough to like try to min max that um so when i do use her i i think i just you know it, it just works out that she's just there um uh, a tywin definitely came back in the meta especially with me being 
you know, maybe cleave heavy draft at start, and then they pick up like a Sage Ball and a Cezanne. Uh, and then uh, A Tywin, you know, kind of kind of does a lot there um, because they would have to hold their S2 pretty much the entire fight if they allowed A Tywin in. I've also used A Tywin against Senya DN combos, which just enough effectiveness to debuff them, you know, to stun them. So Senya can't even counter even after she applies the counter buff. And then she he can cleanse. Um, <clears throat> Uh, when when Senya hits her, he can cleanse the entire team pretty much in two turns or two two touches. Um, so the bulk and the speed and the effectiveness is okay for me. I think the effectiveness I wish I would it was a bit higher, um, but again the gear just doesn't allow for it. I I actually try to chase the effectiveness as you can see. It's just not on effectiveness gear or effectiveness uh, ring, <clears throat> but I did try to chase it. Bellion on injury, I pre banned her because I pre banned so. Not much to say on this, um, I liked her bulk last season, the damage, crit damage is slightly on the lower side, but she was meant to be to be an RTA hero and not a defensive like Guild War or Arena hero. Um, so if I'm gonna change her, I'd probably change her to counter um, and then put her on a defense team. <clears throat> Last Rider Crow uh, hasn't changed really, um, I think his play is still like, he's, he's still usable. Uh, maybe into Archdemon Shadow or something, but uh, uh, much less used. So he's on kind of like secondhand gear, um, just just usable enough uh, into into certain team comps. ML Celine. So she was on Life Steal, um, and I needed a different sort of counter deterrent. Again, this season was extra toxic because we got a mix of the JP server uh, and also Asia players are still of course a thing and then everybody's getting speed gear so uh, I felt like she needed to definitely be built and gave her the higher uh, sword, uh, storm sword artifact for the higher combat readiness push because I really needed it 280 speed not having 100% crit rate ideally one day I can do this and get that um, but she'll remain on this build for a while um, at least when the single target cleavers or or uh, certain like rank cleavers are are out of the mix, um, so she'll remain that way. Uh, Commander Pavel on my highest amount of guiding light, just because I needed that flat attack to get his attack higher. Now with Hua Hua Young's nerf, um, I did put Arena slates into my Hua Young to get that S. I'm going to most likely recall it, and I'll give it to Commander Pavel. I really really like him. He's super good into arena cleaving, into guild war cleaving, and into some RTA cleaving setups. Uh, I definitely used him in all aspects of PvP, so I feel like he's definitely worth the slates, one or two at least. Uh, Athletica, uh, I like this variant. I like the kind of a pseudo damage dealer. Ideally, I wish I was like a 270 speed. Like only if gear allows, right? Like this is 20 speed. Um, everything else is kind of on the slower side. Again, speed gear is being spread out. Uh, but this Athletica, because of the pen set, I was able to like 2v1 a Robbie with her as my main damage dealer multiple times. Uh, once with the DN, DN and herself, once with the FCC and herself. And it was really, really fun. And I do like Athletica a lot, actually. I think her buff really made her viable. Um, and you can make her fast, you can make her damage. There's a lot of ways you can use her, but I think that she's just a very nice hero to have. And uh, Wander of Silk, again, because of no Guiding Light, I needed the buff on the first turn, so I forced an immunity set on her. Luckily, I had like decently fast immunity gear. 285 is not the fastest in terms of a Wander of Silk. Ideally, you want like a 295, so that if they banned your like other opener, she serves to be an opener herself. So she could disable turn one, or she could do something else. She's on a con file because I just didn't know what else I wanted to put on her. Maybe Sasha of Thanes, but... Confal was just kind of meme I guess, um, but the immunity so I can I can rip S2 on the first turn if I wanted to. Um, that was basically it. The effectiveness on the low side, actually. Um, uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, I think it's just the gear I had left over. It just didn't have any effect, yeah. So, um, otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm okay with her build. Uh, Watcher Shuri on the, uh, on immunity, has a bit of bulk, sometimes survives some fake rans. So really, really nice. And it's actually things. Use him in cleave. Use him in RTA. Use him in arena. All that stuff. Good stuff. Um, his attack is slightly on the low side, but the crit damage is okay. And I think overall stats are fine. Gloomy Rain I use because of my prominence with Green Pavel. Uh, good book holder. I made her bulky on purpose with an HP boot 
so that she can actually survive. So I mean like Gloomy Rain, if she gets debuffed by your opponents like Peyra or Rand or something, she actually gets an increase like an insane amount of damage increase. Uh, and also she has like this R and L effect, which is really good to clean up. So that's why I didn't really mind running her slow. Emphasize the bulk so she actually survives. Sometimes she can actually like carry the the end of the fight. Like you lose all your damage dealers, but like they're softened enough so that you can you know S3 here. This is an AOE skill, and again, if you're debuffed, you get increased da damage, right? And you have a speed buff, so it's pretty good. And she's a speed imprint. <clears throat> Sage Ball and Cezanne definitely had to use them a lot. Um, again, as an anti cleave, I think anti cleave right now, it's really hard to just tank down. I think. Ideally, you want some way to disrupt them. Um, so Sage Ball is really, really good. Uh, Dilabet, uh, uh, the uh, Spirit Isoline on the Sword Sword Artifact, stuff like that. Like you kind of want to be able to punish them by making an action and and not just straight tanking down. Um, I think just straight tanking down is often very, very difficult against really, really well versed cleavers. Uh, but Sage Ball and Cezanne on immunity, uh, again, is just the thinking process is just to prevent the Ephlitica, right? So like, ideally, even if Ephlitica does the S2, he cuts her um, before she can like uh, reset him, right? So instead of like a turn one, she can just maybe even soul burn, soul burn reset. The immunity prevents that. Um, so that's why I put him on immunity. Um, and that's why I also said that I will be farming immunity really hard now. I think immunity's value is going up again with how heroes are needing to be built or, you know, the specific meta heroes that can counter. Uh, Solitaria, not super impressive, not super fast. Hand-me-down gear has been constantly hand-me-down gear because I needed the speed gear on other heroes. But effectiveness, effect resistance is decently balanced on Abyss with Crown and useful when I need her. Sylvan Sage Vivian is uh, a bit slow to my liking, but it is what I can do right now. So the damage, the attack, the HP, because she has up to 70% damage mitigation. So higher HP is higher value than defense. I'm not saying defense is not good, but higher HP is often higher value with uh, damage mitigation, like straight up. So think a la like Proof of Valor A Robbie. Um, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so she, she functions the way I need her to. Again, she's on book. I like the flexibility of being able to S1 AOE speed buff, or if I'm silenced, I can still soul burn S1. I can still get an AOE instead of like, you know, I have to do an S3 to AOE. So I like book to be used for her or to be supporting on my other heroes. DJB, one of the wonders, of course, of this season. Uh, a minus triple S, I actually pulled an elemental summon and I got a green Basar um, after the season was over. So I'm actually showcasing a Basar that has an additional imprint than what I was running during the season. But uh, most of the time using the release and have him as a booster. So with the seven speed Soul Weaver Frenzy, he's looking at a 289 speed. I think that his bulk is actually pretty good. I actually give him some pretty decent gear. Um, and again, it was like stealing from Amelia, stealing from like other heroes um, because he is just very, very powerful right now. So flexible. Uh, Ruel used if they're heavy on single target and they don't have a lot of tempo. Um, I just used her to beat a couple of players like recently. Uh, a Ravi, uh, this is actually a okay A Ravi for me. Um, the HP could be higher, but I would be taking out the crit damage. Uh, ideally, I think. If I could get like, you know, 27,000, 28,000 HP, I can potentially put her on uh, 280 crit damage or something. I think it'd still be satisfied with it. Uh, we'll see how she needs to be built, but I run a proof A Ravi because I do play her more into cleave or with the, my cleave comp um, or, or against cleave. So I, I prefer proof over seed. Dillabet needs some refinements. I need a gem on this attack for HP and then potentially this one, we'll have to see, to max that HP so that she can have almost 14,000 HP with those two max rolled. Um, but if when when and if I get a triple S, I will obviously, you know, find the stats into more HP. I kind of like the speed where it's at, I like the damage. The defense is not 2k, but it is what it is. Emma Kawazu used a lot. Um, he does struggle a bit more now because people can just hold AoEs. Uh, but uh, I use him in a lot in uh, offensive arena, offensive guild war. Very, very solid hero all around. That's him. 
Uh, don't look at this. Don't look at this. All right, Labyrinth Cube is just set right now because it's preseason World Arena, and when I'm bored, I played a couple games, but I'm too lazy to take off my Warhorn from my Blue Corin, which is used from, for my Wyvern uh, team right now. So just ignore this, but if I put on Warhorn... Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll just swap it for this. What is this showcase? Just swap it for now. I'll just let the remember to do it later. Uh, so yeah, 28,000 HP, 255 speed, and it's on immunity set. The idea is that if I could run him with a Politus or something like that, again, Athletica can't reset him, right? Because Athletica wouldn't cut. Now, I do pre-ban AOL, but AOL would work as well with Hangai to that concept of Athletica trying to S2 and then S3 into Fire Hangai. So, I'm sorry, not Fire Hangai, uh, uh, Hangai here. Um, so the immunity, in my opinion, not the like he's not a must-have, but it's just Athletica taking advantage of Hangai and resetting him is pretty big. So I felt that immunity was pretty good on him. I put it on uh, immunity. Also, another reason is just so I can spread out. He used to have a hit set, um, and his chest was 22 speed. His neck was 20 speed. So I I also did this for another reason so I can spread that speed gear out. Like I said, the requirements of speed gear is just too insane. Um, but I'm overall satisfied with this build. And uh, let's go. Strays. Strays after buff. One of my favorite heroes right now. I use him a lot in arena. I use him. I use him a lot in RTA too as well. After he got buffed, I use him a lot like with the Athleticus uh, Opsy combo. He's on anti magic mask so that, you know, sometimes I can high roll um, uh, attack, crit damage, and even defense and immunity and speed is not even bad on him. Like none of the buffs are bad. Now I think the common play is to run Azure Comet so you get more crit rate, so you can funnel that crit rate into your other stats so it either get higher attack or higher speed. But I also have him on immunity so it prevents Rimuru from stealing his invincibility or at least from the analyze and assess from the passive itself. So it will never steal it, it will always steal the first two buffs. Um, realistically, uh, the only way he can steal the invincibility is if he runs the S3 right into uh, Strays. But that wouldn't really benefit the fight in general cases. So I do like the immunity. He is on a crit rate neck. Although the crit rate neck gear score is not super high, it does kind of make this build work. Um, if I can get him 250 speed, re retain the damage, that would be great. Um, I don't mind if he's on his comment or anti-magic mask. I think anti-magic mask will be on him for a long time. Since I do have a plus 30 and no other warrior I can think of really benefits from all those buffs while being kind of like you know, like adds to his kit. So I kind of like him that way. FCC at a uh, mine's at an S imprint. I never got really lucky with it, but you know what? I think the stat line is pretty good for S imprint. 230 speed, three, uh, 30,000 HP, and a 1500, almost 1600 defense on immunity. And of course my prime Aureus holder. Hassle, I'm not gonna talk about because he she's geared right now and she is locked, but I never, well, I used her once in World Arena, I lost. Um, with that being said, I won't talk about that further. <laughs> uh, Troublemaker Closet uh, should be on Holy Sack. That's all I should say. Should be on Holy Sack, but it's on Mort. So, it is what it is. <laughs> Again, I don't like really tank down specifically for Cleave, but there is still, of course, like, like it's much necessary in some degree, right? Um, so ideally, I just put the Holy Sack on him and you'll see a better build. RB, I don't really use too much anymore. Uh, and so he's on kind of like spare gear, as you can see here, purple gear, purple gear, just to complete him, just in case I need him, but not really used. Acid at uh, 297, one of my slowest high base speed speed contesters, um, and it's just because I just don't use him too much. Uh, and so he has a lot of kind of like slowish gear that kind of pulls down this build. Otherwise, the other pieces, you know, it has the speed in it, uh, I just can't get him faster. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, paired with some speed imprints, he does serve to be a decent opener though. So sometimes he's a force ban for specific players. Run on Manico control because I lack the crit rate. And I don't use him that much. But otherwise I could probably opt to go with Violet Talisman or something like that. Uh, BBK on Windrider and I tried her on immunity full damage. The only benefit to this is that I don't mind running her like this into uh, someone who picks a Ravi. But the only issue is, of course, you can see there is no ER. Um, and not having ER makes it very, very difficult to play her unless she's last pick. Uh, so 
I after I built her this way, I didn't really use her that much. I actually used my ER version a lot more. Um, but she's holding another Wind Rider, which I'm kind of, you know, I'm hoping for more powder soon before the Wind Rider uh, powder shop thing gets rotated out. ML Charles, wish I could be faster, just don't have enough speed gear. So with what I had, because I had some pen sets that were decent, I was like, okay, let's just make him full damage. So either your ML Charles is really fast or you have a bit of bulk, good balance. Um, I just made him pen set, you know what? That's that's just the best I could do. Um, but uh, overall, okay. You know, I don't really use him a lot though, as a as a pusher, as an initiator. I prefer like someone like Athletica, which has a bit of protection. Uh, he's just like really, really aggressive. Like if you want to play that uh, that role there. Uh, Remnant Violet getting a buff soon, um, but I never used him this season. I think maybe once, uh, and he looked different than this. But because I used him that once, I believe I swapped his gear around to look like this. Uh, not the most impressive, but it, it does get the work done if I draft him correctly. Uh, Briar, which is Syria, uh, shouldn't talk about her too much. I don't use her in World Arena, but with Kron's kind of running around. I kind of think uh, Briar Witch is pretty good, right? Um, especially in, into a defensive comp. Uh, realistically, I think because if Kron's are running some ER, oh, she gets a bit, bit, bit more effectiveness on her. Uh, and I'll probably try to, you know, max her Mola soon. Operator Cigarette was tuned to kill most squishier Hua Yang without attack buff. So I could just run it into the first turn. I don't have to cycle from S3 attack buff and then wait for her barrier to reapply and then S2. So that was the design for this opsig. Uh, it is triple S as you can see there and I think the stat line's okay. It just needs a bit more speed and ideally a bit more damage. If this was a plus 30, I would be rocking a 3800 easy on the attack. Uh, RC Min Shadow, Cancer Hero. Uh, I do have her uh, kind of fast on a crit rate neck. And uh, I mean, I, I never really swapped to the self attack imprint, but you can see the 3500 is pretty good. Uh, maybe maybe I'll switch her up, you know? I just don't like spamming her a lot. I feel that she's. I don't like using RNG heroes on my end, and maybe I should because I lose to a lot of people's RNG heroes. C uh, uh, Dom. Uh, so C Dom here could use a little crit rate. For that health there um but uh i use her a lot more especially at the beginning of the season when i was ran cleaving pavel cleaving so it'd be like you know a robbie ran pavel politis c dom something like that uh and so she was always like a max book holder there don't use her as much anymore just because that kind of cleave has been uh pushed out in terms of like there's this counter deterrence to that so it's really hard to pull that off now um but once in a while you still get that off my spec Tenny is on a destruction pen set. Really like this build. The only unfortunate part is that this boot is like 60, 62 gear score or something like that. As you can see, I re-rolled the attack. I don't even remember what the original stat was, but in a, a frenzy to try to build her on a destruction set and pen set, I rolled that into attack. So this is really pulling down the weight of all the other pieces that could have shifted gear score. The other pieces are actually pretty good. Um, this one's not that good, but it's usable. The damage is insane. Like this Spectenny was like one of the things that like if you didn't ban her and you had no reach for her, like you're pretty much dead -o, especially if I had attack buff and if she was stacking. This is very, very good. The only thing is, like I said, I think the speed is a bit too low. So my ideal scenario for this Spectenny is that, you know what? I would be even willing to drop the attack or even the crit damage just slightly, like maybe 10 crit damage slightly or 100 attack lower to get 10,000 HP flat and then 195 speed um, and I think it's possible I actually had a uh, I had a I had a theory crap it, it's not optimal stats because I actually overshoot crit rate I think uh, maybe not that one is it is it something like this um, and like uh Something like, okay, no, that's not, that's not it. The boot is not right. But anyways, you kind of get the idea, right? So it's like, if I can get the right rolls, um, and this is not optimal. Like I said, it's overshooting my crit rate. Um, but you could almost get like t uh, 190 speed, 195 or whatever. And then get like almost 350 crit damage, 100% crit rate, and ideally like 10k HP. And I'd be really satisfied with that. I think that would be like one of the best like hybrid damage dealing specter 
tennies that I've ever seen. <laughs> it would be really, really fun. Anyways, she works this way because I also boost a lot, right? So DJB, Athletica, like DN. I boost a lot this season, so like she kind of works. Um, I don't really sit her back too long. And a bunny dom on immunity because I, I learned my lesson. So either you force the C Lilius to S3, which she most likely wouldn't, um, or she can't S2 her, so she can cleanse with Doctor's Bag, right? So it kind of like the immunity is kind of nice on her. The speed is honestly on the slower side, um, but it is what I have left in terms of the speed gear. So she just never really made it into like a lot of World Arena fights. I, I still prefer like a DJB method or a Dilibet method. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. That's my that's my entire count showcase. Um, so I think that was a uh, I have a locked heroes here, but only the starred ones are my RTA heroes. These guys are locked, but they're not. So like, was that 70, 76, 76 heroes built? Yeah. So that's my account showcase for the end of conquest seasons, the season eight of World Arena. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I will end this for the video recording. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.